Okay, now we have our first React application, but what do we do with it? Uh, I do want to keep in mind that it is JavaScript. So if you just upload the files as they are up to either GitHub pages or S3 bucket, they will not work. Um, nothing will show up. So what we have to do is if we go to the documentation of the React Create app, we can see if we run npm run build or yarn build, uh, they will actually compile all of the JavaScript that we just wrote into HTML and JavaScript. So it'll do that and it'll create files that we can upload into a static site hosting like GitHub pages. So all you have to do is just run npm run build and this will create a new folder with our static assets and you have to redo this every single time uh, we make changes to our app because it creates uh, as you can see it creates an optimized production build and now we can see this folder that it just created called build and we have index.html so it's not actually readable because it just uh, minified everything so that it's super fast on hosting it and so all you have to do is upload everything in this build folder into GitHub pages and there you have, you have a static website up and running. All the functionality will still work, still use JavaScript, um, but the uh, Create React app will transfer everything into HTML, CSS, and JS so that it can be run on any web browser. So how does this translate to React Native, which is what we're going to use. Well, if we go to uh, React Native documentation, you can see it's not even on a first build. It's still on 0.57. I doubt it will ever get to a full 1.0, but it is very stable. Like I said before, uh, there's a ton of companies that still use it. Um, I don't know if they still share the companies that are using React Native at the moment. Uh, who's using React Native? see Facebook, Facebook Ads Manager, Facebook Analytics, of course, because they created it, uh, Instagram, which we were going to create ourselves, um, another F8 Facebook app, Bloomberg, Pinterest, Skype, Wix, Walmart, Uber, Tesla. Now, not all of these are completely built in React Native, like Instagram, I know for a fact, is not all built in React Native. It was kind of half and half, um, which is a testament to the the ability to create modules out of the React and use it alongside uh, native Objective-C or Swift or Java, which is pretty cool in itself. Um, but we're going to use all React Native for our application. Um, I do know React or Walmart was completely rebuilt in React Native, so that whole application is React Native. Uh, there's actually some new ones on here, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's a huge community around React and React Native, and there's always like updates which is a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes the updates breaks has breaking changes um, so that makes you update things a lot. So the way we're going to fix that is we're actually going to leverage Expo which I mentioned before. Expo is basically just an abstract layer on top of React Native so it's like a sandwich like I said before. The bottom layer is React, it's just a React library on top of that is React Native, which uses React uh, to talk to native components in iOS and Android. And then Expo is on top of React Native, and it kind of streamlines everything so you don't have to use Xcode directly. It kind of builds everything and updates every, all the modules within Expo so that if anything uh, has a breaking change in React Native, the Expo team goes through and makes sure all the modules work for it so there shouldn't be any uh, breaking changes, but like it'll probably have 5% of the breaking changes you would have on just using React Native. Um, the one downside to using Expo is maybe some of the native components aren't available in Expo, um, or in, in Expo. I would look at all the documentation. Uh, they have come quite a far away since they first launched. They have a ton of components. And basically, they have everything that we need. They have the camera module, location, notifications. Um, and not only do they have them, they make it a hell of a lot easier to use. Uh, if we're using just plain React Native, we have to find these open source libraries to use the camera, to use uh, maybe image resizing for our photos. 
Uh, but that's something that's already in Expo. There's already documentation, and we already know it works. Uh, and so it's just a lot faster to test out app ideas. Um, and if for some reason you can't use Expo in the long run and you find out after a couple months of developing that you need a native component, um, you could either build it yourself in Expo or you could just detach uh, from the Expo library and just revert to plain React Native. Um, like I said, it's built on top of React Native so you could just detach from Expo and just use React Native if you find out down the line that you can't use it anymore. Um, some other awesome features at Expo is they have an Expo app. So instead of building an application in Xcode uh, and then getting test users in test flight and then inviting them and then having the whole approval process go through um, Apple to actually get your app to be able to be able to test and then to launch in the App Store, you could just use Expo app to kind of basically test, you could test right away. Instead of using the simulator in the computer, you could use your uh, actual phone as a simulator. You could test out the camera and the notifications, which just makes development like a breeze. It's kind of awesome. Um, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that because it is pretty cool. Uh, and then there's also over there updates. So say we get our first build into the App Store, we go through the pain in the ass of getting it approved by uh, the Apple team, which I'm actually currently doing right now with the Sell That app, which I showed earlier. Um, a bunch of small updates. It's not very difficult, but it's just annoying to go back and forth because usually they take 24 to 48 hours. Over the holidays, I just did it over Christmas, and it took like a week because no one was in the office uh, because there were actual people going through your app and checking to see what features uh, that you need for Apple to be able to approve it to go to the App Store. Um, and so Expo kind of makes that an easier process, um, especially after that initial upload, you do a lot of things just through over-the-air updates. So what that means is just like you would build a web page, if you see something's broke or you want to update something, you just update the Git repo or your Heroku instance or whatever you're hosting it on and it'll update within a couple seconds or a couple minutes. Uh, it doesn't have to get approved by anybody. Um, the same thing kind of happens for Expo over the air updates. If you ever heard of Code Push, it's very similar functionality. Uh, any JavaScript changes, you could do that through over the air. Uh, if you want to add like Facebook login or camera functionality, functionality or any native component functionality, you still have to get updated through the App Store. Uh, but any smaller like styling or um, text fixes, you could just do through JavaScript bundles. Uh, and that's because uh, React Native and Expo, they create, you're writing in JavaScript, it creates a JavaScript bundle, and then that bundle talks to the native components. So not to get too deep into the weeds, uh, long story short, Expo makes it super easy to make changes and it just makes it more fun to uh, de through the development process of uh, making changes. Uh, and so we're going to get started. So if we go to the Expo documentation like we are right now, we can see that we have to install a few things. So first we have to do an npm install dash g, which is global, uh, the Expo CLI, so the, the command line interface. So this will allow us to use Expo to start the app uh, and then start the simulator without having to go through Xcode. So I would go through that. That'll take a little while. That should take like five to ten minutes or so. Um, but the one that you do need to do first, uh, and then we'll we'll pick up back in the next video, is you have to install Xcode through the App Store. Um, so we're not going to interact directly with Xcode, but we still need it installed in our computer so that we could leverage the simulator. So the, oh, just the simulator will pop up and Expo will initiate that. But we need Xcode installed on our computer to get started uh, with this whole process. It's a big file. I think the last time I downloaded it, it was 10 gigs uh, and it takes like an hour or two to install. So uh, get on that, start downloading that now. And in the next video, we're going to get started creating our first Expo ap application and seeing how our React application that we just built correlates to an Expo and a React Native application to see the similarities of React from different platforms. 
See ya.